Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. <laughs> and of course, I'm wearing my Rockets gear. I did purchase this shirt. This is a new shirt. I'm wearing my Rockets beanie, but I'm also holding this. This is the newest Rockets um, cap, the snapback that will be on display on July 29th. The Rockets get the second pick in the NBA draft, and I'm super excited about that. Okay, so without further ado, because that has nothing to do with today's tutorial, let's get started. I am learning and diving into sublimation, and I am so excited. I am um, entering into uncharted territory for me, um, and I'm learning slowly but surely, and I definitely want to show you everything that I've learned so far. Okay, so this is the shirt that I made tonight and I want to share my process with you. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, the materials that you will need in order to complete this project, um, I use my Cricut machine to upload the design, but you honestly don't really need a Cricut in order to do sublimation because this design could have been uploaded into Silhouette Studio. It is free software. Um, you will need a sublimation printer. My printer is an Epson 2760-2760. I am using a white um, poly blend shirt that I purchased from Walmart. It is 35% cotton, 65% polyester. I'm using heat resistant tape that I purchased from Amazon. I'm using ASA paper, the 125 gram um, version of it. Um, there are two different ones. There's one that says 125 that I've seen, and there's one that says 120. I don't know if I said the same thing twice, but. I'm using this one. Looks like this. Um, I also use butcher paper. I purchased this. I, I'm gonna call it a butcher block. <laughs> this roll of butcher paper from Amazon, and I actually love it because it comes with the cutter, and I don't have to have anything permanent, um, and I can just move it as I need to. So I actually I love that. And the design I purchased in a bundle from Design Bundles. You guys, if you don't have a premium membership to design bundles now is the time they do offer a 30-day trial for free where you can download some of their designs but um i have fallen in love with design bundles and I, this is my go-to all right um and that is just about it um oh and my heat press the heat press that i used is the eight and one 15 by 15 swing out um so i don't know if you can see it but uh, it swings out like that and you know there are eight different attachments that came with it. I purchased that one from eBay. They have a similar, they have the same uh, model on Amazon, but you could also use a, your Cricut Easy Press as long as you can get up to 400 degrees, okay? Okay, I am in Cricut Design Space and the first thing that I'll do is upload the file that I'm planning to use for this um, tutorial. It's already uploaded right here, but I do wanna show you the full process. So I'll go back and I'll upload it again. I'm gonna go to Browse. I'm going to go to my desktop. That's where my Cricut files are saved. And I will go to the folder that has my sublimation bundle. Okay, I did purchase this bundle from Design Bundles. Um, highly recommend them. All right, this one it says, if my mouth doesn't say it, my face certainly will. I get a message that says, you know, it's loading and that it's a large image. Okay, I always, you know, I just click complex. I don't mess with it at all. I'm going to click continue. I don't do anything to clean it up or adjust the file at all. I just click continue again. I, when this pops up, I'm going to choose print then cut image. I'm going to click upload. So I definitely are. I have it uploaded twice now, which is fine. Okay, so I'll use this one. I'll insert the image. When it comes in, it's gonna come in already too big. I'll get a, an error right here. If I click on it, it says the image is too large. I need to reduce it. And because I know this is the biggest size that Cricut Design Space will allow, that is the size that I will choose for my image. So 6.75 by 9.25. Let's see what let's see what it looks like if I change it to that. Okay, it just makes it longer. Okay, that's one option, and I actually mm, I'm gonna just do it. I'll do it. 
and I will see, you know, if I like it. All right, so now I can click make it. It's a print then cut, okay? So it's gonna pop up here on my mat um, and then I'm going to click continue. I'm gonna get a message to send this to my printer. Okay, I'm gonna click send to printer. The printer that I'm using is an Epson 2760, 2760. Okay, where it says add bleed, I keep it on. Um, I also, I've been turning on the use system dialog. Okay, and I click print. When you turn this on and you click print, you will get options for your printer. So if you wanna change the printer settings or do anything to the printer, this is the time to do it. Okay, so it's thinking about it, it's thinking about it. It's, you know, it's telling me that it's connected to this series of printer, even though I only have one Epson in my house. Okay. Now, even though this one pops up, this is not the printer that I have my settings um, set up for. I have it set up for this one. Okay. And so I am going to click preferences. Okay. And mine is on the sublimation preset. When I click sublimation preset, these are the settings. It's a rear paper feed, eight and a half by 11, premium presentation mat, premium presentation paper mat. Um, the quality should be set to high. Um, okay. Um, high quality color, two-sided printing off, multi-page off, one copy, reverse order can stay on, that's fine. Okay. Let me show you the other settings. So I'm going to go here to more options. Okay. Um, when I go to more options where it says color correction, I clicked on custom mine is already saved so it's already there and if i click on advanced where it says color management color controls is the correct option and make sure your color mode goes to adobe rgb and the gamma is 2.2 i did not make any adjustments here i know that um, it's my understanding that if you're using a mac um, that you do make you know some adjustments here but i'm not using a mac i'm using an hp um, so those other settings don't apply to me, but for my computer, for my laptop, I did not adjust any of these settings. I'm going to click okay. Okay. And I'm going to go back to main and just make sure that that setting, I want my quality to be high and I'm going to click okay. And I am going let me make sure my mirror image was on i'm pretty sure i saw but i want to make sure okay so the mirror image is on so i did not click mirror in cricut design space when i load my paper i'm going to load it so that the back of the paper is where the that says a sub so when i put it in my printer the I won't be able to see the words that are on the back of the paper. Okay, I'm putting my paper in with the A sub on the back. Okay, this is a uh, load the paper right in through the back, and I am going to click OK. I'm going to click Print. So I did not mirror my image in Cricut Design Space. The printer will mirror the image for me. I will come back after this is printed because it does take a while. I don't have it on fast printing mode. Okay, I have my design pulled from the printer. And remember, I did not mirror it in Cricut Design Space. I let the printer do the mirroring for me so it does look like it's backwards. And um, I've seen multiple crafters who do sublimation. Um, they, they, sent, they say a reminder about letting the ink um, be you know making sure that the ink is completely dry i've seen some who you know place the design on the heat press for a few minutes maybe one or two minutes just to make sure that it's dry i did put it under um 
my heat press and I didn't press down. I just, you know, laid it on the heat press with the, the arm swung out. I don't know if you can see my swing out, but I had the arm swung out. Okay, so this is completely dry. I know that for a fact. All right, the next thing that I'll do, and hopefully you can see my design and you know you're familiar with where that shirt was purchased from. The shirt that I'm using is from a very popular retailer. Some people call it Wally Mart. It's Walmart, okay? This shirt was $3.88, and it is a six is 65% polyester and 35% cotton, so it's a blend, all right? With sublimation, you have to have, you know, a combination of polyester, at least 65% um, is what I've been told because this is considered as a substrate and the, the sublimation ink will only really stick to the polyester fiber. So the higher poly count you have, the more vibrant your image will be. Well, because I'm still learning how to do this, I did not want to spend a lot of money on shirts. And um, to be honest, I was quite pleased with how the first shirt came out. Um, so these, you know, I got these for $3.88. I did not spend a lot of money. Um, if you're in my Facebook group, you know I shop a lot, a lot, 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 lot more than I need to. All right, so the next thing I did was I went over my shirt with a lint roller, okay? Just to remove any of those extra fibers that might be stuck to the shirt. And I mean, you wouldn't see that. You know, if you were just looking at it, you would not see those fibers, but trust me, they are there. Okay. All right. The next thing that I did was, and I probably did this out of order, so I might need to press it one more time, but um, I put the, Put the butcher paper on my heat press and I just gave my shirt a quick press. Okay, so I'm just doing a quick press just to add a little bit of heat to it. Not, not long at all, maybe a, a few seconds, all right? Okay, so because my um, heat press is not a clamshell, it's a um, swing out. What I've done, what I found that works for me, is I put a piece of butcher paper inside the shirt to protect the image from transferring from the top of the shirt to the back. So I just took a piece of butcher paper and I put it inside the shirt. Because otherwise, I have a hard time figuring out how to protect the shirt. So I still have the tag in there because I'm fancy like that. All right. Okay, so I have a piece of butcher paper on my heat press. I'm gonna put the shirt on the heat press. I am going to cut around this because I don't need all these black lines. Those are the registration marks that Cricut prints automatically. I don't need those. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this out. This is trash. Put my scissors back. Okay, and I'm gonna put this on my shirt face down. Okay, and let me just go over it one more time with the lint roller because I did put it under that heat press and just in case there were any fibers you know trapped under the heat press I don't want those to be on my shirt because what they do what happens is those little blue fibers end up on your shirt and you're wondering where they came from okay so I have a piece of put your paper inside my shirt I'm gonna put my shirt back on the heat press I have my heat press set to um, 400 degrees and I'm going to press it for 60 seconds okay so I'm pulling it out making sure that it is 
as straight as possible. I do wish I had a clamshell heat press in case you were wondering. I do wish I did have that. All right, I put my design face down on the shirt. You can put some of that um, heat resistant tape on there to keep it in place. If you're worried about that. Okay, so I have my heat resistant tape just to keep my image in place. And then I cut, I use a piece of butcher paper that's big enough to cover the entire image and most of my shirt, just in case I didn't get all the fibers. My heat press is supposed to be set to 400 degrees. Sometimes it goes up and down. So hopefully it'll go up. I'm gonna press it. So the timer will count down to 60 seconds. It did not go all the way up, but we should see. Okay, all right, it beat. This paper is brown. <laughs> I'm concerned. Hopefully this turns out okay. All right, let me go ahead and move it quickly from the heat press. Okay. This is very, very hot. OMG! I, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 three dollars and eighty-eight cents come through Walmart. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. Uh, look at that. Let me take the butcher paper out. I'm very pleased with this. Extremely pleased with this. And. The dye is in the fabric. Now, it's my understanding that if I had a higher quality poly count, um, a higher number of poly counts, so if, my, if it was 100% polyester, the color would be more vibrant, but I'm pleased with how this came out. Thank goodness. Okay, let me close out and give you my final thoughts. Okay, so hopefully you were able to follow my process and you know get through your sublimation beginners getting started and you're ready to dive in that's the only way to learn is just dive in and get started this is the shirt i'm wearing it i love it um this was another design that i did um just to test it out before i started the tutorial and this one says motherhood the scariest hood you'll ever go through so i thought this one was so cute too and i used the same brand you know, the Walmart $3.88 shirt, and I will put, um, I'll just put that down in the description. I don't have a link for it because I, you know, went and purchased it myself. All right, um, so thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't already, consider joining my group on Facebook. It is called Cricut Crafting with Delanda. We are a very kind group, um, and it's a group that is suited for beginners. It's a safe space to ask questions and interact and share your work. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.